Joining me today in studio via our, our, our live video conferencing is Karen Quimby of the Alzheimer's Society of Muskoka. Karen, it's been far too long since we've had an opportunity to chat. Uh, and, you know, part of that's because of COVID. But I thought it's a great time. January is Alzheimer's Awareness Month. Um, really a great time to, to bring you back on the show and talk to you about the service, the valid and, and very important service that you're providing in our community. Um, Karen, first of all, just tell me about, you know, the importance of, of um, Alzheimer's Awareness Month and how that plays a role in, in what your organization does. Well, thanks so much for having me come on. I always love coming and speaking with you guys. Um, Alzheimer Awareness Month is really important to us because there's really a large stigma associated with Alzheimer's disease and other dementias. People are really reluctant to share their stories or reluctant to come out and talk about it. And so this is an opportunity to, again, raise awareness, um, share stories. In fact, this month we're doing um, a four part series across Ontario, highlighting a family um, going through the disease. And I think it really highlights um, from a bird's eye view, not only what the caregivers go through, but the person with dementia goes through and how it can affect their memory and their thinking and their day to day activities and what that impact is like for caregivers. And, I think it just helps people have a better understanding of how to step up and support, especially in the early stages when you don't always realize that the person's experiencing some of those challenges. So I think stories really help people connect. And, you know, Karen, it's interesting because, you know, COVID-19 has, has played a role in, in sort of negatively impacting a lot of mental health issues. But, uh, you know, I think we kind of um, overlook some of these things like Alzheimer's where, you know, people who have Alzheimer's, they rely on these connections and, and they're not able to get them as much now. Um, what is the Alzheimer's Society of Muskoka doing to kind of help with those types of issues and making sure that your clients are, are kind of getting the stimulation that they, that, that they need? Yeah, that's a, that's a huge area. It's a huge issue. Social isolation has always been a problem for people living with demen dementia and their caregivers to start with. They've often felt very alone in the journey. They often can't engage to the same degree in the same way. And so when COVID hit, it certainly disrupted us as well in terms of we really had to quickly figure out how we were going to continue with our programs and services in a different kind of way. And so Fortunately, a lot of the counseling that we do um, was still able to be done through OTN or through Zoom and also through telephone counseling. Um, face to face obviously kind of stopped and it's still kind of where our doors are open and we've got a lot of precautions in place, but people can still come in if they've got an appointment and we're well prepared. Um, but our, our social recreational programming, which is uh, we run a program called Minds in Motion. Uh, it kind of came to an abrupt, abrupt halt. And then just when we started getting it back going outdoors again, it was fall and the weather was changing. Um, so that impacted and now we're in lockdown again. But we have moved all our programming, including Minds in Motion online. So uh, people can come on and do one hour of physical activity and one hour of cognitive stimulation with their care partner. Um, but again, it doesn't reach everyone, uh, you know, because not everybody has the computers and the technology to be able to do that. Our drop-in program we run online weekly. We do an exercise program separate. We've instituted a new art program to keep people online through Zoom. Um, but one of the other things for people who didn't have online and who don't have online, we've been distributing activity kits to the caregivers and the persons with dementia so that they can keep the person engaged. And we delivered those not only to caregivers that weren't connected, but also into the long-term care homes because we certainly recognize that activity staff were getting redeployed into other areas and weren't able to work the same way. We also got some grant money to do that um, through uh, the United Way and the town of Bracebridge was great. They gave us some grant money. We purchased a bunch of robotic animals and we've been certainly um, distributing the robotic animals into the community as well as into the long-term care facilities. We got our handy dandy volunteers to get really busy and start putting together more twiddle mops, more activity boards. Um, and we actually also had the uh, volunteers put together these really great tote bags to give out to the long-term care homes so that they could put their scrubs in to keep people safe um, so they didn't have to handle their scrubs too often. So we, we right away started focusing early on when we weren't doing face-to-face -face stuff as much about how can we get activities and get people um, more supported in the community because we really recognize that when you don't have access to social recreational programming and you have that reduced person contact, you know, you start seeing 
staff challenges in long-term care because family can't come in and visit as easily. We start seeing in the home challenges because they're not as engaged. They're not being able to get out and about and visit with other people. We start seeing functional decline. You know, the list just goes on and on. So it's a big issue. Karen, it's interesting, you know, I mean, we, we look at all the, the detriments of COVID, but it's really forced a lot of organizations like yours to um, find, adapt and find new ways of, of connecting with clients and, and helping, helping your clients as well. Do you see uh, something like Zoom or other types of video conferencing being a way of um, being meshed into how you do things in the future moving past COVID? Yeah, uh, actually, that's a great question because we've done some analysis like through surveys to make sure how we're doing, you know, are people, what can we do differently? How can we help? And um, the one thing that came back was, see, we used to run support groups face-to-face in Bracebridge, Gravenhurst, Huntsville, and Perry Sound. And then now that we're not doing face-to-face, we have moved our online Zoom weekly. Well, that basically has enabled people to get access more often, because if you live in Bracebridge, you don't have to wait for a month until we come into the community. They're getting online and there's some, there, a lot of them are accessing it every every week with with different people from across the whole region. So that's actually been great. So we've um, gone in the direction to ensure that we will maintain our weekly uh, support groups, even when we get back face to face. And then on the education side, again, we moved all our educational programming online as well through Zoom. Um, and, and we will probably still offer some of that, uh, probably the education side, probably not quite as much, but certainly um, on the support group side, many people have really um, found it actually helpful because they don't have to deal with trying to find respite in the home for the person living with dementia. Um, they can, you know, log on and they don't have to worry about the person. They don't have to travel. Then the winter weather isn't an issue. So all those other barriers that were kind of restricting people to sometimes have access or made it more difficult is making it easier. But with that being said, there's still a large number of our, our clients that we serve that just still aren't able to access to the same level of support that they were receiving before. So, Karen, you know, the obvious uh, most important factor here is the, the funding. And I mean, you know, this has obviously been a difficult time for any organization to try to fundraise. But, uh, you know, I'm sure you guys are, are trying to come up with creative ways of doing that. How can people, um, you know, if they want to support the Alzheimer's Society of Muskoka, not just in January, but all year round, you know, how can they how can they find ways of supporting you guys? Well, um, you know, the support has been astounding. We all, especially through our community grants that we've had access to because of COVID, but you know, those general donations are so important to us. Um, and the best way they can do that is you can either phone our office if they like it that way, mail us a check. They can go online and get a digital receipt through our website. It's www.alzheimermuskoka.ca. Um, you know, they can link in, I think th- from our Facebook page. So any of those ways um, are fantastic. And it actually, we've had amazing support because once we started delivering those robotic animals, for example, and people were receiving them, they often were donating back the cost of the, they're, they're quite expensive, but people heard about it and said, yeah, I want to sponsor a, a, a pet and donate it. So um, we've had some great support, but we, we, as we move forward and try to increase our services, um, as we get out of COVID and try to maintain all those online services, in addition to what we were doing before, requires more more additional uh, financial support to do that so that we have the, the resources. So we're very grateful for any support we receive from the community to help us maintain our programs and services and expand them into the community. 